Hey, New Vintage families, we are so excited that you're joining us for our NBC Kids online experience this week. We want you to know that even though we're not able to meet in person for kids' classes, we still have a great experience so your kids can continue to grow and learn right at home. We've got a great story that your kids are gonna love. We've got some music so they can move and dance and raise their hands in worship just like they would on a Sunday morning. And parents, I wanna encourage you, uh, watch the video with your kids, engage with them. We've even got some questions at the end of the video that you can use to help your kids engage with the lesson. So we just wanna say thank you and enjoy. Where does gratitude start? With your words? Oh, uh, hold on one second. Hello? Oh, thanks. In your head? What about your heart? Being thankful includes all of those things, your heart, your head, and your words. But I think gratitude truly begins with your eyes. It starts with paying attention, stopping to see the people around you and all the other beautiful things in your life, like the way your dad buttered and cut your toes just the way you like it. That crossing guard standing in the pouring rain to make it safe for you to get to school. The way your kid brother can turn even cleaning your room into a party. Your fingerprints that God designed for you and no one else in the whole world. That amazing, breathtaking sunset on the way home from dance class. When you truly see these things, it changes your heart. The words bubble up in your mind and you can't help but say thank you. The more you remember to thank God and the people around you, the more others can see God at work in you. And that's why gratitude is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Feeling down, you pick me up. Sing. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh, oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see. Sing it out now. Oh, 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 oh. I just want to say thank you for the way you love me. I want to say thank you for the way you love me. I just want to say thank you. I 
how they've helped you. And let me tell you something. Having gratitude is easy when everything is going the way you want or the way you expect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you know and I know that things don't always go the way you want or expect. I have just one thing I want. I have just one thing. Hello. Ah! I <laughs> have just one <laughs> I have just one thing. I I have just I I just I just wanted to wait a second. No! Ah! I have just one thing I want. I just have one thing that. What else could possibly go? Damn it! Quit it! In today's story, we're going to learn about the best time to have gratitude. I'll give you a hint. It's not always when. <clears throat> it's not always when things. Oh, come on! I'm not even using a microphone! Oh! I'll tell you later. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. Ilsa sighed as she trailed along behind her mom at the grocery store. Can I just go wait in the car? Mom handed Ilsa a tiny loaf of bread to put into the cart. You need to learn for yourself what you can eat. Nothing, I can't eat anything. Earlier that day, Ilsa had gotten the food sensitivity test results back from the allergist. No gluten, no dairy, no artificial colors or flavors. I don't even know what gluten is. It's in bread and pasta and crackers and a lot of other things. Ilsa grabbed the loaf of bread. Then what's this? Gluten-free bread. It looks like cardboard. As they reached the dairy case, Ilsa spotted the new holiday display. Yes, they've got eggnog. She reached for a carton, but Mom shook her head. Eggnog has dairy in it, hun. You can't have milk. Let's try this instead. Mom picked up a small carton and handed it to Ilsa. Soy nog? By the time they got home to unload groceries, Ilsa was miserable. You've got to be kidding. What about Sunday dinners? What about Aunt Ellen's stuffing and Grandma's rolls and pie and all the good stuff? We'll find options for you, I promise. Ilsa reached for her plastic pumpkin full of candy on the counter. She grabbed a mini candy bar and then stopped, a sinking feeling in her stomach. I can't eat any of this now, can I? I'm sorry, hun. When Ilsa opened her lunch bag at school the next day, she tried not to groan. A sun butter sandwich with gluten-free bread, a bunch of grapes, a few carrots, and some weird looking oatmeal cookies. Where's my string cheese? Oh, right. Ilsa couldn't bring herself to finish lunch. Her stomach still felt empty as she settled back into her seat at social studies, where their teacher, Mr. Mendel, dimmed the lights for a slideshow. One of the best ways to learn about other cultures is through something we all do every day. Any ideas what that might be? Like what we wear? 
Actually, I'm talking about something we do at least three times a day. Ilsa raised her hand. Eat. We all eat. Bingo! A famous photographer took photos of families all across the world, along with the food that they eat in one week. I want you to pay attention to the details. This first family lives in Great Britain. The first photograph included a family from the United Kingdom. The overflowing table of food included cookies and pizza. Mmm, pizza. Here's a family in southern Italy. The next image showed a family with three small children. The loaves of bread on the counter looked so fresh, Ilsa could practically smell the scent of baking bread. Ooh. This is Germany. The next image showed another table top-loaded with food, but Ilsa could only focus on the container full of ice cream front and center. Yet another thing she could no longer eat. Her stomach rumbled. Here's a family in Bhutan. It's a small country beside India. The next photo showed 12 people with a colorful display of vegetables, a large bag of rice, and a small amount of meat. Ilsa frowned. That's all they eat? It's what they have to work with. This next photograph is from the country of Chad in Central Africa. A family of six sat on the ground. In front of them, a tiny bag of grains, a small amount of beans, and a handful of vegetables. Wait, where's the rest of their food? That's it. For a whole week? Ilsa shook her head. That's just... Ilsa? What are you thinking? I guess I knew that some people don't have the same things to eat that we do, or as much. It's just different seeing it. The colorful photos haunted Ilsa for the rest of the afternoon. She was quiet as she took off her backpack in the kitchen at home. You want a snack, hon? I've got some trail mix. I'm good. Ilsa pulled her lunch bag out of her backpack and opened it up. How was the gluten-free bread? It was okay, actually. I'm going to finish my sandwich now. Ilsa took a bite of her sandwich and chewed. It wasn't like regular bread, but she could get used to it. What's that thing Grandma always says before dinner? What thing? I don't, before the prayer. It's the verse, like say thank you, whatever happens. Oh, um, it's from Thessalonians, I think. Mom checked her Bible app. Give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that. Ilsa smiled and took a bite out of one of the oatmeal cookies. Hey, these are really good. Thanks for making stuff I can eat. Ilsa knew it would take some time to adjust her new eating plan, but she was glad for the reminder that she still had a lot to be thankful for. When the Apostle Paul first started telling people about Jesus, he didn't always get applause. Instead, some people were mad at Paul and he spent a lot of time in jail just for saying what he believed. Probably not the way he wanted things to go. But listen to what Paul wrote. Give thanks no matter what happens. Did you hear that? No matter what happens, that means the best time to have gratitude is all the time when you get picked for the team and when you don't get picked. When your mom buys your favorite cereal and when your sister eats the last bowl. When you're in school, when you're out of school, even when you're quarantined in your house, there's always something to be grateful for, if you look hard enough. Here's a good place to start. Paul wrote, give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Even when things don't go the way you want or expect, you can always be grateful that Jesus loves you and died for you. So the one thing to remember today is this. You always have something to be grateful for. So next time you talk to God, tell him you're grateful and not just when things go your way. Be grateful even when times are tough because God loves you and is there for you all the time. And that is why I have just one thing I want to say to you, God. Thank you! Huh. Yeah, well, I still thank you, God. Thank you! Bye! <laughs>
Thank you so much for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, we got some questions coming up that you can go over with your kids, and we hope to see you next week. Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh.